All right, Steve, tell me about your project and what you're doing. I'm trying to personalize my maker's notebook, which sure. goes with me everywhere. It's how I try to capture um, ideas. In the future, it'll have a um, binary index system. It only shows the lights by squeezing right now because I kind of uh, just put in the LEDs. But eventually, there will be a bookmark, which goes uh, and bookmarks the uh, odd number pages. The odd number, so I don't have to mark every page. Um, along the spine, which is going to be the, the code, so that the bookmark will sit down in here and, and uh, determine which LEDs are lit up depending on which page I'm on. So I'll keep track of my progress as I go through the book. Got a ways to go. Just started this a little while ago, but it's full of sketches for the book and then architectural designs that I'm um, building a back, backyard tower for. So without trees, I had to build my own tower. Um, and I'm trying to experiment with different architectural forms right now. So it's about 15 feet high right now, and it's uh, about three months over uh, budget in um, time and many hundreds of dollars over budget. <laughs> and I had no idea how hard wood would be to use. Huh. I, I had naive um, sketches early on and estimations and costs that were off by many orders of magnitude. But it did allow me a great excuse to buy a whole bunch of tools. And so now, <laughs> and to make a whole bunch of mistakes with some very nice cedar. So, yeah. So this is a constant companion that also has lesson plans and notes for math and science classes as I'm a teacher. And um, I really love the idea that it's, uh, people have encouraged you to pack the notebook. And I, I saw that being done aesthetically at the last Maker Faire that I went to in San Mateo. But I decided that there was enough room in the thickness of the binding um, to really start to do some electronic um, additions to it. Um, future plans, I have bought Soul Robotics uh, um, solar panels that will go across the front right here and I'll probably use a, a circuit close to the Minty Boost type circuit so that I have a way of uh, charging my phone and whenever I'm in a coffee shop I just lay in the window and maybe have some juice. So that's easy to incorporate because the thickness of the uh, solar panels are much thick, thinner than even the, the book itself. I can just cut it out and put it in here, put a little circuit behind. Um, my buddy Monty has made a tiny little um, less than inch squared Arduino board, compatible board that has motor drivers built into it. And so that will find a place in the cover as well. Very low power. It can go off of one very small, it's got a charge pump in it, so it can go off of one small lithium polymer battery, which also will fit within the complex of the binding. And then I'll have a full on, I don't know, Mega 128 um, with motor drivers in the book along with the LEDs. And so then the sophistication will grow. Maybe by the time that I'm done, Filling it up with ideas, I'll, uh, it'll be a little bit of a museum piece, but in the meantime, I'll just hack it as I fill it up. So that's the idea. This is a very beautiful personalization. Uh, my, the idea is I want to have, um, I'll, I'll make cutouts for the whatever additions I put in, solar panels and this. Um, and then the whole front will become a capacitance touch sensor. Maybe an alarm, maybe just to make weird noises or something, but because it is conductive, I'll take advantage of that. So, uh, and now I want one of these. <laughs> How has Maker Faire and Make Magazine and Craft affected the way you think about education? Oh my god, uh, if, if, uh, if I can only tell you the kind of inspiration that it gives me and that I can take back to my students. Um, you, know, you go home and you're buzzing and besides, uh, it give you a million ideas for projects for one thing. But every time I come, I'm, uh, I have to work on my ability to finish projects. It's the focus. So this place can explode your mind in possibilities, but then when you see people actually bringing finished projects or near finished projects, and that's fine too, you're inspired to kind of focus on things. You know, I, I'm almost shamed into wanting to finish this because it's not done yet. It's an idea and I want to, uh, I want to keep working on it in progress. But when you come here, it's, it's a great catalyst for that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, that's all it is right now. <laughs> Battery and some LEDs. It's the seed of an idea. Yeah. And this is the idea of a geeky binary tool. And you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, educational value in thinking about things in binary terms. My math students certainly enjoy making binary codes or binary codes or whatever they come up with because they really quickly see the utility in several different bases. Um, so I took two days of school off to be here, fly from Portland, Oregon. And I, after our San Mateo visit last year, uh, we vowed never to miss one of these again. So we're hoping to make a fair to Seattle sometime. We're, we're optimistic that it could go there. It's not super realistic to go to Portland, but we think that the region could support it. Uh, we hope that they at least break even here so that, <laughs> that this can continue. But uh, there's a very distinct vibe here that's fantastic. Um, it's very different in some ways than the San Mateo Maker Fair, but it, it's been equally inspiring. And uh, I don't know, 
at least this longer. And your and your students are they packing things and being curious more? Well, yeah, it's a I, I'm fortunate enough that I'm not constrained by any particular curriculum. So what I do in my school is emergence and based on the passions and interests of the children and a lot of very hands-on inquiry based uh, work. So for example, our last advanced math group project involved designing um, emergency shelters. Um, in places like Katrina or places where emergency housing is needed, their challenge was to take um, two 4 by 8 sheets of Corex, maximize the use of that Corex, and design small little preschool sized uh, uh, structures. Fortunately, we could go right outside of our math class and measure preschoolers at our school, average their size, and come up with a model for a preschooler. Now they have uh, brilliant, very different uh, designs that they're building full scale and have built light scale models for. Um, we use uh, power scissors to very easily cut uh, uh, the Corex. And um, they've been doing a lot of work in their PE, actually building shelters out of cardboard, um, using a variety of systems to connect cardboard together. So the, the, uh, the nature of construction and uh, building is very much integrated with all levels of, uh, of, um, of our curriculum and our students. Uh, we're really trying to blur the levels between things. And, uh, because the kids go there so readily, because they become so amazingly engaged in what they're doing, um, it's not. It's much less of what would be considered an activity, and more of an experience. Because the children really just feel very passionate about it. We remember for years, it affects their thinking and our thinking. So we're fortunate enough that we're not constrained by cookie cutter canned curricula in that regard. Uh, the children really surprise you every single time. And, uh, well, that's neat. It is. And what's the name of your school? It's Opal Charter School. It's part of the Portland Children's Museum in Portland, Oregon. Oh, great. So, well, thank you so much. Thanks for the interview. Appreciate it. Now I get to stick these out. <laughs> Find a good place to stick this on. Yeah. And then go talk to the actual guy who designed this. And <laughs> really neat.